And now let's finally move to arguably the best part of the project, that is building the controls of the airplane. Let's first remove the line that moves the airplane forward, we'll soon build a much more sophisticated system for movement, but first we need to catch the user's input, and we'll do that inside controls.js, where I have attached two keyboard event listeners that are updating an object that keeps track of which keys are currently being pressed by the player. Now back in the airplay component, we'll need three new vectors x, y, and z that can be used to create a new rotation matrix. The concept is simple, you can use three basis vectors to define a specific rotation. If the vectors are the default values for x, y, and z, where z points forward, then x points to the right and y points up, then it will be like if the plane has no rotation, like in this part of the picture that we're seeing here. However, when we rotate and sync the x and y vector and create, for example, this new basis reference, what it's really telling us from a rotational perspective is that we would like to rotate the plane along the z-axis. And you can transform these three vectors any way you like to create different orientations for the rotation of the plane. In this case, for example, it's pointing downward and it has been rotated such that the x and y axis are displayed in this direction. And now that we went over the theory, let's create a rotation matrix with the three basis vectors we define at the top of the script. And let's apply the rotation to both the airplane matrix as well as the camera. This way, once we rotate the airplane, the camera will still be properly oriented in front of the airplane. And it's important that you apply the rotation in the right place. For the camera, it needs to happen after the translation to the plane position, but before we tilt the camera to see more of the top portion of the plane. Awesome! Now, whenever we start to rotate these vectors, the rotation matrix will update the orientation of our scene, so the next logical step is to go back in our control script and start to put all these theory into practice. Here I've made a new function, update plane axis, which will be responsible to rotate the plane based on user's input. We'll start by defining a jaw and pitch velocity, which can be positive or negative depending on which direction we're going. This function will be called in every frame, A and D will update the jaw velocity of the plane, whereas S and W the pitch. Both will be reset at the beginning of the function, so that we're only going to apply the velocity if the key is currently being pressed. And to rotate the vectors, it's as easy as using apply axis angle twice, depending on the type of rotation we need to apply. When we are changing the jaw, we have to rotate x and y along the z axis. And for the pitch, x stays fixed in place, and we are only rotating y and z. After we're done, we need to normalize the vectors to be sure that their length hasn't changed. And finally, we can update the plane position by moving it along the z-axis, which in our project will always point forward. Plane speed is a small number that I'm setting to 0.006, but you can easily change it to something else if you wish that the plane moves faster or slower. And the reason why you need to add the negative of the speed is tied to the way that OpenGL represents the z-direction. We're making the assumption that positive z points forward, but OpenGL sets minus z as forward, and thus we need to use a negative number to move the plane in the z-direction. This is a minor detail, don't think too much about it, and just trust the code. Now let's use this new function inside the airplane component, and there we have it. With WASD we can control the plane and navigate the scene. However, these controls are quite clunky since we're treating our velocities like on or off switches, so they're either at a maximum or at absolute zero. This is obviously undesirable, so let's hop back in VS Code to fix that. Instead of immediately setting the velocities to zero when we enter the function, we can do something else and decrease them by 5%. If we don't press the buttons for around one second, they'll eventually reach zero as we keep on reducing them by 5% every time that we enter the update plane axis function. Here I'm setting a maximum to the magnitude of our velocities, and I need to use the sign function since the velocity can be either positive or negative 
negative depending on the direction of the input. And finally, on every frame where a button is pressed, we're increasing the current velocity, thus giving the impression that there is a build-up time frame from when we are at zero to when we reach max speed. This bear with the fact that it also takes some time before the velocity reaches zero if we don't press the button, will create a much smoother control system than the on-off switches we had a minute ago. And look at that, this simple change made all the difference. I'm just slightly pressing on the WASD buttons and the animation is so much smoother and way better than it was before where it was either zero or max speed. In this case instead we are smoothly animated animating between zero and max speed and this is definitely much better than whatever we had before. And going back in our controls, I've made an event listener for the R key. Whenever we're going to press R, everything will be reset into its original place. The plane position, the rotation of the plane, the turbo velocity, which we're going to see next, and the yaw and pitch velocity of the airplane will all be set back to zero. And speaking of turbo speed, let's define and export a small variable that we're also going to use as soon as we code the motion blur component in the next part of the series, and then go back at the end of the update plane access function to define a fun and interesting way of interacting with the scene by activating turbo mode. Similarly to what we're doing for the jaw and pitch velocity, the turbo will be increased when we press a key, in this case the shift key, and reduced by 5% when we don't. This line will keep the turbo value between 0 and 1, and this variable will be used to ease out the turbo number, we'll soon see what this function is all about, and then scale it down to a number that we can actually use to increase the speed of the translation in the z-axis. Ease out quad is what is commonly referred to as an easing function, and in the context of this project you can imagine an easing function as something that takes a number between 0 and 1 and returns a number again between 0 and 1, but transformed. Our turbo value is linearly increasing between 0 and 1, because it was easy to just increment it by a fixed amount, but it would be cool if the turbo speed starts out quick and then gradually stops increasing the speed. With this function we can move the 0, 1 number from a linear increase to something that looks closer to what we're trying to do, as in a sharp increase at first that then gradually stops as we increment the speed. And finally, to improve the sense of speed when we are in turbo mode, we're also widening the field of view of the camera by an amount that's proportional to the transformed turbo value. Out of all the small features of this little game, this one is definitely the one that I like the most, especially as soon as we introduce the motion blur component. It will really come to life by then. Now, I want you to notice one thing. There's one little tiny detail that our project is still missing. Take a look at the place where I'm putting my mouse on. If I rotate the plane left to right, the camera will instantly turn to the same orientation of the plane because we're using the same matrix for both the plane and the camera, and thus the side of the plane will remain exactly at the same point where my cursor is, no matter how much I turn. However, in the original scene, there's a bit of a delay between the rotation of the plane and the rotation of the camera. Take a look, I'm placing my cursor here, and look at that, the plane rotates a little more or a little less, uh, depending on when I do start the rotation. This is because there's a bit of a delay between the rotation of the plane and the rotation of the camera. These little details are, in my opinion, an important improvement to make the movement of the game feel polished and smooth, and it's something that I've often seen in other games, so we'll give it a go and we'll try to implement the same features ourselves. Achieving this effect is not too difficult, but we'll have to use a different representation for rotations, one that will give us the option of using a technique called spherical interpolation. We'll first need a new matrix to hold the rotation of the camera, and a quaternion for the spherical interpolation. Without going too much into the weeds of quaternion-based rotations, it's sufficient to know that when we have two quaternions, each representing a different rotation, we can smoothly transition from one rotation to the other. In this case, at the beginning of each frame, I'm basically making the rotation of the camera 17% closer to the current rotation of the plane, such that if the plane remains fixed in a specific rotation, it would take a few frames for the camera to catch up. 
and this delayed quaternion saves the results of the operation for future frames and it's immediately reused to go back to our matrix representation for rotations by using this method from PreJS. And once we compute the matrix, we are ready to use it in place of the old rotation matrix with this new delayed rotation for the camera. And with just a few lines, we have greatly improved the look and feel of our controls. I think that's it for this episode. We finally have a working airplane and the game is almost complete. However, we're still missing the logic for the flying targets and the cool motion blur effect that gets triggered in turbo mode. We'll see how to make both components in the next and last video of the series. And as always, I hope you found these tutorials useful and I'll see you soon again on the next one. See ya!